Thank you, Arpo. Uh, good morning, everybody. And um, I'm here to talk about the Sustainable Shipping Initiative. Um, to provide some context why I'm here, the SSI is a non-profit uh, founded back in 2010 with members, as you can see here, from across the shipping ecosystem. Um, an, an important aspect here is that we are trying to, let's say, join the systemic challenges together and have the inputs from our members from all aspects in their stakeholder group, trying to join the dots and, and create positive impact through meaningful solutions for the industry. We spent 12 years looking at everything, um, I would say from seafarers rights to circularity to sustainable ship recycling and of course decarbonisation. All with the objective of creating sustainable sector uh, across the environmental, social and socio-economic pillars. We believe that a sustainable shipping sector is a resilient sector and achieving this requires action across a number of topics and by a number of stakeholders across this shipping ecosystem or value chain. This is from alternative fuels and technologies for decarbonisation to seafarers' rights and in this world that we are now a just transition, being transparent and inclusive um, with governance processes and more. Our current work addresses three areas, sustainable marine fuels, uh, given that we are considering alternative fuels in terms of low and zero carbon emissions. And we developed 15 sustainability principles addressing those environmental, social and socio-economic aspects. Um, thus is addressing on a full life cycle basis, i.e. well to wake. Our work is being uh, taken into and, and considered in the life cycle guidance being developed by the IMO currently and that is done through our NGO member at WWF who has observer status there. Ship life cycle circularity in shipping currently focused on steel and its potential for circularity within shipping and sustainable green steel potential going forwards. Seafarers rights is the third piece of work that we're focused on and this addresses the labour and human rights not currently covered by regulations but afforded to workers ashore. In October 21, we released a code of conduct for the industry alongside a self-assessment questionnaire for adoption. And this is to help mitigate supply chain risks and improve the well-being and welfare, of course, of our seafarers. In 2016, the SSI developed a roadmap for the industry. This was updated at the end of 2020. And it acts as a compass across six vision areas, as you can see here. Uh, intersecting challenges and opportunities across all of them and we focus on scanning for emerging issues, tracking progress in the short, medium and long term. This is an example of a, a dive into one of the area, uh, vision areas and each vision area is, is linked to a set of objectives like here for the ocean vision area. Then connected to these themes, so you have the objectives themes, there are a series of milestones across the present and coming decades. It's the progress and emerging issues, as I mentioned, that SSI is focused on and leading narrative to inspire and influence its own work and the work of others in this shipping ecosystem. So aside from the pressing issues linked to oceans, as you may have seen, very small print, but I'm sure it'll be distributed. You can look on our website as well. And uh, the biggest challenge that shipping focuses on now, or faces, is decarbonisation. There is still much uncertainty around what fuels will be viable, and investment decisions are coming up. You're very aware, of course, that we are one life, uh, investment cycle away from 2050, and with vessels having a lifespan of up to and beyond sometimes 30 years, this is very much a pressing and urgent issues issue for shipping. A sustainable shipping industry is not only possible but necessary. As we know, food, medicine, construction materials are only some of the products carried and moved around the world by sea. Shipping will remain a critical sector in the future but it needs future proofing. Rising sea levels create risks for port infrastructure. Rising temperatures and ocean acidification causes change to our own 
oceans that will change the way the sector is able to operate in the future. On land we may see fuel sources diminish or disappear, materials become more costly and any other number of impacts that we haven't thought of that may be reverberating across all sectors. It's a difficult transition but one that also has significant potential for supporting the global energy transition. Decarbonised resilient and supply, uh, resilient supply chains can enable an adaptable and sustainable global system. But this needs to be built in, this needs to be future-proofed. And this is in terms of building this into ship design when it comes to ship life cycle circularity and designing for end of life. The alternative fuel developments that are being considered for adoption, including then of course the safe supply chains, the safe use on board and the safety of our crew and communities impacted by shipping's activities. Thus, we also need to build in that new port infrastructure. According to the UN high-level climate champions and the Getting to Zero Coalition, we will need 5% of the alternative fuel mix in shipping in use by 2030 to be on a pathway to zero by 2050. There are positive signals of change already. Linking back to oceans, some shipping lines are rerouting around endangered blue whales, for example, reducing engine noise, sonar, uh, equipment being used to track and monitor progress in this area. And some ship owners are already um, choosing a clear set of fuels to focus on in terms of low and zero carbon, e.g. methanol. This helps to signal clear demand requirements, unlocking the production uncertainty and supply chain uncertainty and allows these supply chains to be stress tested and organised and, and piloted. Uh, first mover actions are, are key in this area. And then to sum up, no single organisation can really solve this alone. We have the opportunity to collaborate and coordinate action across stakeholders, across sectors. Let's learn from the other sectors, not reinvent the wheel. Um, many of the things that shipping faces today as challenges have already been faced by other sectors, whether it's automotive or aviation, and let's learn from those to allow us to collectively future-proof shipping and ensure that it continues meeting current and future generations' needs. So let's make the most out of this opportunity here today and going forwards and transform our sector together. Collaboration for us is key. Thank you very much.